What's up, guys? It's Opex. Today, today we're gonna have a video for you. Are you ready? So today, quite tired. Don't know exactly if I wanted to talk if I wanted to talk about this today, but I decided right now that I might as well. Let's talk about slavery. I have a video talking about modern slavery and your straw man or something like that is called somewhere in my previous videos. I didn't really discuss much on it. I just played a few videos back to back to kind of get you to understand the human farming and the whole thing through generation after generation and in detail um, on easy, easy to understand terms why we are slaves nowadays. Now, some of you do know. So if you don't so I'm going to be not detailing much. I'm just going to explain a little bit to you. Uh, kind of get the 101 out of the way. Kind of make you think. So once upon a time, we're in the United States back in the 14, 15, no, well not the 14, the 15, the 16, and the 1700s. Um, there were slaves. But you can definitely tell who was a slave and who was not. Um, not by race. Clearly there's all different races that were slaves. And generally speaking, the slaves made up 1-5% to 5 of the population during those times. 1-5% to 5 of the population. And that's at a high end, the 5%. So... 95 plus percent were extremely free during this time. And when I mean extremely free, I mean they could piss in a river, they can fucking do whatever the fuck they wanted. They can probably fuck their sister if they wanted to. They were that free. And be, being that free and being able to pursue uh, and be prosperous and, and do whatever they want in this land that's not controlled by government or banks, um, they had a relatively nice life. In fact, if there was a time frame in history that I wish I lived in, I think it would be somewhere in between the 15 and 1700s in the United States. Now, of course, the Indians were friendly to the white man uh, at the beginning stages of meeting each other and stuff. And I think I've made this point before, but I don't have to go back into it. But the point is, it was a decent life style. Um, you can pursue what you wanted. You can farm your land. There's no government regulation. There's no banking scheme. You're not enslaved. But there were slaves. There was Irish slaves, which made up about half, <clears throat> half the slavery that was going on. And then the other half was generally uh, African. Now, I'm not going to get into my beliefs or my thoughts on, uh, you know, the indigenous people. Uh, a lot of them turn into slaves. Um, and uh, I, I think that a lot of them were black. They, people thought were Africans, but they're actually black. Um, indigenous people. But we're not going to go that route in detail because we're talking about just slavery. So we had a small, small, small chunk of slaves. Now think about it. If you're a slave and you're working, now there's a misconception. Real quick, I gotta talk about it. I know I've probably talked about it in the past. Where slaves didn't have it nearly as bad as you think. But of course, no one wants to be a slave. No one wants to be a slave. But they didn't have it nearly as bad as you think. They weren't all in shackles and chains and fucking getting whipped put into hot boxes for days on end, you really need to be rebellious as a slave for them to do that, to put you in the hot box, to uh, go that route. But generally speaking, you did what you were supposed to do all day. It wasn't extreme amount of labor. It was, you know, typical eight hour work days, you know, very, you know, they, even the slaves would have a day off and relax and enjoy their life and, you know, sit, you know, have sex with their wife and the wife would you know, basically they were able to eat well, for the most part, and uh, raise their children. Uh, they were just, you know, outside the realm of education. 
But if you think about it, year after year, generation after generation, they tend to slip their mind that there were slaves. A lot of them did not, in fact, know that there were slaves. A mass majority of them did not even have, couldn't even fathom that they were slaves. Never put two and two together. Year after year, generation after generation, um, it was very rare when someone would step out of line and they would have to go in the hot box for a day, right? On a 100 degree day in the, in the box, it's like 120. Very rare, and you really gotta fuck up because they want you to work hard. And if they're hitting you with whips and keeping you in shackles and shit, you're not gonna work. You're not gonna work hard. You actually had a decent life considering you were a slave. Nobody wants to be a slave. I don't want to be a slave. But uh, the, the conditions weren't nearly as bad as people think or, or are talking about nowadays. Not nearly as bad as you think. Um, human resources, they want to take care of you. And your slave owner wants you to have a long life. And, uh, of course, when you get old, you retire and you get to eat still. They don't just kill you. Um, your owner or owners would take care of you. They want you strong and healthy. They don't want you to be overworked after two days and not be able to work anymore. All right, just throwing that out there, that you didn't know you were a slave. Chances are you did not know. You had no clue, even if somebody told you, your eyes wouldn't open to it. Um, you just thought it was a way of life. If you were born into the world as a mouse, in a cage, that's all you're going to know. You understand? Um, if you're born nowadays into this world of, you know, banks and all the shit that we're dealing with, that's what you're going to know. So you're going to be used to it. So they didn't know that they were slaves. Now, one day hit and, you know, the British are coming, right? to enslave the people. Of course, we didn't have a firm government. We didn't have a firm banking system in the United States at that time. So the banking dynasty, which was the banking dynasty in uh, some parts of Europe, but generally speaking in uh, the UK and Britain, this banking dynasty comes to the United States saying, well, if they're not going to take over and, and control themselves, we will. Because, of course, that's what the central banks are doing nowadays. They're trying to find every country who uh, they possibly can to convert to their monetary system to enslave the country. So they're trying that on the United States. And some people did not want it. Some people fought for them. The people who fought with the Brits, which you don't hear this very often, but there were people who fought with the Brits that were Americans, in my eyes, traitors, or ignorant and didn't know any better, which you'll see a lot nowadays too, and I'll make those points in a second. The Brits came in and wanted it to enslave the people on a banking scheme. The same banking scheme that's been used over and over again and they've been so successful with. But they tried to fight us and to take over. And they did succeed. A lot of people don't understand this and you don't hear this in the history books. But yes, the Brits succeeded. They got their bank in the country. But people don't know that. It's not in your history books. Well, they did succeed. Uh, Americans thought that they won. Britons thought that they lost. But the Rothschilds knew that they won. And when they instilled the, this, you know, this bank, uh, of course they lend it to the government. Uh, there was a new government that formed in uh, 1776. Obviously, all uh, Americans that started this country. Um, the government had control of the money that would come in. Now, of course, 
banking system lends money to the government at interest. I don't know what that interest exactly was. I don't know. But that's how banking works. They lend the government money at interest. For example, every $100, they would have to pay $105 back. And of course, you would need a lot of money to for a country. So they lent the government money at interest, which in ta- in for, uh, which made the government have to pay, uh, have their people pay a tax. And the people did not want to pay this tax. Taxation without representation, blah, 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 right? Half the country did not want to pay this tax. And half the country was like, ah, just give it to them, you know, whatever. You know, not thinking for themselves, not understanding this is a form of slavery. It's going to enslave their children and, you know, uh, uh, stop them from being extremely prosperous in their life. So, put a 1-2% to tax and the Confederates said, fuck this. Hell no. We know what this is. You can't enslave us. Real men stepped forward and said, fuck this. This ain't happening. The North, which were a little, uh, they were already giving up a lot of their freedoms and they were like, ah, just accept it. We'll just be this one big country of slaves. But not really understanding it. Because nobody wants to be a slave, as I mentioned before. But they just don't see it. It's kind of similar to Hillary supporters now and Trump supporters. Trump supporters would be like the Confederates. Fuck this. We need, we need change. We need to get away from this taxation, which Hillary wants to up the taxes, take away your guns, take away your freedoms, and Trump is all about freedoms. Free market the whole night. And Hillary supporters are completely blinded, not seeing the, t- the tyranny in the decision of picking Hillary. They don't know any better. They don't see it. They don't see that they're voting to become further slaves. They don't see it. So, look at it as the Confederates, as Trump, and the Northerners, as uh, Clinton. They didn't know any better, so they fought to enslave the people. And the Confederates won, but not... They Okay, again, the Confederates thought that they won. The Americans thought that they lost. But, nevertheless, the banks won again. The government won again, actually. This time the government won, and they were able to instill their tax. Now, we fought a huge war not to get taxed. Keep right to I-57 South. And then the Rothschilds, they had full control over the country. And, um, of course, people like Benjamin Franklin exposed this bank, the bank scheme, and wanted it not to come in. Uh, there was a lot of information saying, hey, they're really doing this. Let's not let them. But nonetheless, they took over. Took over in the 1800s again. Uh, like fully, they fully took over the country. Um, tax was everywhere. Uh, I think it was like a two percent tax or something like that. And uh, they took over the country. And uh, in the 19, I don't remember the 1930s or 40s or 20s or 50s. I don't fucking know. In the 1900s, the Federal Reserve came into uh, to be. It used to be by the government. And then they were like, you know what? Fuck you, government. We'll still lend you money, but uh, we're, tr- we're doing it uh, with a middleman this time. So we're going to print it at the Federal Reserve, but it's owned overseas. Instead of being owned overseas and lending money. So now we have a middleman right here in the United States. Continue further in debting you guys. So the government lends money from the Federal Reserve, which is owned overseas. And now, even more money needs to be owed. 
You see the national debt nowadays. So in the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, a big deal of problems started occurring in the United States. The central banks started running everything, and not just uh, money lent to them and creating debt for the country, because now this debt is rising. The debt's rising, they need to lend more money, um, inflation started occurring, uh, taxes, uh, taxes went up, people felt the burden of all of this. Now it wasn't so heavy like you couldn't be as, obviously you couldn't be as prosperous, but you could definitely uh, tell the difference. So you start to realize that hey, they gotta work harder to pay back, pay the government, which the government has to raise taxes to pay back the banks, and the banks are still adding debt over and over to the country. So what are we at now? 16, 17 trillion dollars debt to foreign banks. 17 trillion dollars debt. And we have a lot of tax. We're taxed out <laughs> out the yin yang. Um so then they came up with a scheme, the government, that basically had made you and your children, your family collateral. For the debt. It was from your certificate of live birth, which I, I think that's what they called it, the certificate of live birth, which uh, said you are a human, you are, you know, so-and-so person, and this is who you are, this is your name, your date of birth, etc. And it was your certificate of live birth. They took a scheme where they took your certificate of live birth and created your birth certificate. Which, literally, in the legal world, literally, in the legal world, it literally killed you. If you're born and you got your certificate of live birth, that's who you are, that puts you in the system that you are a human being. They took the birth certificate and killed you. You do not exist anymore as a real person anymore. And they took it and they made you a corporation. Corporations don't have the rights that a real person has. So, amongst all the taxation, amongst all the interest that you have to pay back and all the debt, they've made you collateral for the debt. Meaning, you are literally owned. Corporations are owned. People are not owned. Uh, slavery was abolished, and you cannot be owned legally. So they made it a system where we can legally make you owned because now you are corporations. My name is a corporation. It doesn't, and I choose to represent the corporation. So when I choose to represent this corporation in a court of law, you are just uh, condemned to the laws that apply to corporations. Meaning, you don't have all your rights. The Bill of Rights, the Constitution, doesn't apply to you because it only applies to the people. You are now, now no longer a person. You are a fictional entity corporation that is run and controlled and owned and could be killed at will. Now, you provide a lot of taxes to the government and so forth. You are actually essential. Think of it like you, the average person, provides about ten to $15,000 or more you know, some people estimated 100000 thousands average, but I don't think it's that high. I haven't calculated that high, and I'm sure I'm missing things to calculate it that high. I mean, every dollar in circulation is taxed like 400% or something on average. So every dollar makes $4 to the government, which goes into the banks, etc. Anyways, so I just went off tangent. <laughs> So you're worth about ten to fifteen thousand dollars 
in revenue for the state, for the government, for the feds. So you're something that they want to keep healthy. Kind of like that slavehood that happened two, three, four hundred years ago. Five hundred years ago even. Where you don't realize you're a slave, and that's why I'm pointing this out to you. And you are collateral. They want you to work for them and be healthy. That's why in the workforce, like, I worked at Home Depot. Safety was always a a thing. Like, be safe. We don't want you to get hurt. Blah, blah, blah. It's more than just uh, uh, suing a corporation like Home Depot. It was more or less that Home Depot has the responsibility to keep you safe not because they value you as a worker, you are replaceable. It's because they owe, the, there's under contracts that they have to keep you safe uh, because the banks technically own you. The government gave you up to the banks in order to lower the debt because now the revenue that you're providing and your life goes all to the banks. So that's pretty much how you enslave a country, 101. Um, There's no shackles and chains. Most people don't even study law. Now, four or five hundred years ago, not even, uh, just even up to, up until about a hundred years ago, the average person studied the Bible and law. It was the two biggest things that you were basically forced to know in order to not enslave yourself. Know the Bible, the Holy Bible, the Christian Bible, and no law. These two things are important. Nowadays, Christianity's out of the picture. I mean, who studies Christianity now? You know, less than a tenth of the population read their Less than a hundredth of the population reads the Bible every day. How many people know law? That statistic is even worse. It's probably closer to about one out of every four or five thousand studies law. They have no idea about this shit. Now, of course, I'm just throwing these numbers out there like I know, right? I have no idea. I don't know who studies law. I don't know who even reads the Bible every fucking day. But I do know that that was basically forced on people to be Christian, to understand God's will, and to understand we are under God and under the Constitution and all the laws that proceed. So all of the factors needed in your head were available to understand when people are going over the line, when people are mistreating you, when you should... uh, you don't defend yourself, and uh, it basically is a great education. The, the Bible and law. We don't have that in this day and age. People are clueless that they are slaves, just like your slave owners did not allow your their slaves to be educated. The reason being is because they would wake up out of their slumber, out of their slavehood, and defend themselves. So. I'm here to tell you today, learn your rights. Learn what God gave you. Uh, If you don't want to be a Christian because that's too much for you or some shit, at least study law. Because that's even more important. But if you study law, you're going to come to the conclusion that everything's rigged against you and you are not a person anymore. When you go into a court of law, they ask you, they say this name, step forward. And when you step forward or you say present and I'm here or something, you have just made a uh, legal uh, pact that you are this person. You are representing this corporate entity. Now, what you should have said, which actually, that's a video for another time. I'm not even going to get into that, actually, because this video will be never ending because there's way more content in law, which I'm going to definitely get into. Uh, relatively soon. I I said I was going to get into it months and months ago, but I still haven't. Um, There's just so much content on my channel. Anyways, 
So your slavehood. Realize that you can't drive a car without a license. In order to get a license, you need to be a slave. That's how deep it's got. Now, there's a, a pretty much a dress code from like the beginning of time that separated the sheeple or the peasants and the elites. Um, kings would wear purple fucking capes, right? Crowns, like you can tell just by looking at them that they were slaves. About 100, 200, 300 years ago, they would wear really, really nice clothing. Look at uh, the government officials from like the late 1700s. Look at what they wore and then look at the average peasant, what they wore. You can tell a huge difference. Um, Nowadays, what is it? Business suits mean that you're not a slave. Like, nice fucking Armani suits means you're not a slave. If you're wearing a nice suit every day, you are not a slave. But look at what I'm wearing. Cotton t-shirt. Is there a red flag yet? Look at all the slaves. Look at all the peasants. Look at all the workers. Just on what you wear, you know a difference. Does it really cost $500, $600, $1,000 to print out a suit? No. It might cost them $20 fucking dollars. Maybe. But they jack up the price to understand that there is a class separation. It's able to identify the regular slave as opposed to... Uh, the ones with, you know, financial freedom, all types of freedoms. There's a huge difference just in what you wear. Now the slaves, 400 years ago, wore next to nothing in, you know, ripped clothes, but they would make new clothes and it's just, it didn't look pretty. You can always tell the peasants and the slaves from the elites. Since the beginning of time, since the beginning of tyranny, since the beginning of class systems, since the beginning of creating peasants and workers and slaves and creating an upper class, an elite that don't have to work. They just collect the money. They've created a system, this matrix, so that so that you can work and empower the system. This whole system is based on you being a slave. Now, I can't open your eyes, right? I can put a, I can bring a horse over water. I can't make that horse drink. I can give you all the information, all the thought processes. I can give you so much more in depth than what I'm telling you right now. I'm just breaking the surface just to make you think, okay, well, how does this make you a slave? Well, that's on yourself. I mean, I could go in more in depth. Um, I can talk about instances about jail and the whole nine, but, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton can't go to jail, but you can for doing one one hundredth of what she's done. Just to give you an example. Why? Because Hillary Clinton is not a citizen like you are. You've been told, oh, I got to get into that in my law video. I can't talk about that yet. <laughs> I'm limited here, you know, and what I should be talking about for this video. Anyways, I guess that's enough for now. I think you can probably put two and two together on the system makes slaves. You might not have shackles and chains, but best believe you are a fucking slave. In the Matrix, Neo wants to know what the, the truth is. What does Morpheus tell him? The truth is, you are a slave. Since the day you were born, you see it in the cubicles, you're stuck in a fucking cubicle, you're stuck going to your prison, your plantation, for eight hours a day, but on the weekends, just like in the past, you would have days off. Days that would make you think that you're not a slave. You have these days off. You have this privilege that your slave owners have given you in order to keep you from being overburdened. 
You know, I'm only allowed 70 hours a week to work as a trucker. I mean, I work a lot more than that, but on the books, I'm only allowed a certain amount of time to work. Why? To not harm other people on the road, obviously. And uh, the more important thing is that I'm not overworked. Because if I'm overworked, one day I might snap, right? They've learned a lot about slavery in the past with shackles and chains, and they've learned how to keep you a slave without those shackles and chains and make it much more difficult for you to realize the paradigm of the Matrix. I'm still going to get into a big video on the Matrix. I'm going to detail a lot about the Matrix, and I'm also going to detail a lot more on the banking scheme. I'm also going to detail a lot more on law. Stay tuned for those videos because they are coming. I, I have so much. I have hundreds of thousands of hours of content I still need to give you. And that's just now. And, you know, by the time all that comes out, think of my conscious ascension then and more information and more details and more thought process. So stay tuned to my channel. If you uh, like opening your mind to things, you know, subscribe. I have tons of content, you know. Stay happy, stay healthy, and start being more aware. Again, this isn't the most crucial video that you ever need to know. Uh, who needs to know that they're slaves? <laughs>